here again with uh, Virginia International University. Uh, my whole life has been about promoting international cooperation. Uh, when I first came to Washington, well, I studied to be a missionary priest and shared that kind of background with uh, Tim. Uh, we also share local government in Canada. We also share a deep, profound commitment to public service, making things better for people. Uh, but my whole career was international. And when I became chairman of Fairfax County, you know, the international posture here is extraordinary. And I've worked with virtually every chamber uh, on so many issues that matter to us. And in the time I've lived in Fairfax, I've seen the same kind of change Tim talked about statewide, only even more dramatically here in Fairfax in Northern Virginia. When I moved to this county, we were 3% foreign born. Today we're 30% foreign born. We speak 120 languages. Not each one of us, but. <laughs> Our schools, I think, have six official languages, and it's growing. Now, if I told my neighbors 30, well, 40 years ago, that we were gonna go from 3% foreign born to 30, they might have made some assumptions. They might have said, well, the crime rate, I can't imagine what the crime rate would be. What happened? Crime rate went down. We had the lowest crime rate of the top 100 jurisdictions in America and one of the lowest in our history. Now, we wish there were no homicides, but a few years ago, we had the same 14 homicides in a jurisdiction of 1.1 million as we did in the 1940s. The lowest homicide rate in America. Well, all right, jobs. The economy will go to hell in a handbasket. We created 650,000 jobs in Fairfax County. Well, income, poverty. We, our median household income is 106,000, making it the third highest in America. Education, that will collapse. Well, you know, we try to create a level playing field in uh, learning English, but it works. We have the lowest dropout rate in our high schools and the highest rate of kids going on to higher education in America. So you'd have to conclude that immigration is directly tied to our success. And in Fairfax, we feel that way. I always laugh and tell people, I said, the, when people, I, I, I described this enormous demographic change here that we've absorbed. And people say, oh my God, what's been the reaction? I go, actually, you know what the reaction is? Thank God we got better restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how it should work. That's America. We need to be refreshed. We need to remember our roots. I'm the grandson of an immigrant, who, by the way, came here to America, my grandmother, with those no skills. There's a crowd that doesn't want unskilled immigrants. Well, my grandmother was an unskilled immigrant. She worked hard. She brought her invalid mother over from Ireland and her two brothers. They call that chained immigration. I call that family reunification. Now, we need to get a little political here. This is a moment of truth for America. And all of us need to be involved, wherever we came from. It is not okay for the President of the United States to begin his campaign by saying Mexicans are rapists. It is not okay for one of the first acts of that President to ban an entire religion virtually from coming to the United States, as if they're all of one kind and they're all a threat. It is not okay for the President of the United States to repeal DACA pro uh, protections, putting at risk 700,000 dreamers, one of whom was my guest at the State of the Union address this year. 
young girl from Bolivia. She came here when she was one. She wouldn't know Bolivia if she fell over it. She's from Annandale. She didn't know she was undocumented until she went to get her driver's permit at 16. And her parents had to say, uh, something you need to know. <laughs> she's a scholar. She's an athlete. And in her spare time, she mentors kids in grammar school who have learning challenges. If you met her, you'd be so proud of her. I am. She's as American as anyone else. And it's not okay that she lives with a threat every day that she could be deported. She is a fellow American, and we need to regularize that. It's not okay when the President of the United States decides that the country of the Statue of Liberty, give us your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, meaning refugees welcome. We'll protect you. That's what America is. He's cut the number of refugees from 110,000 two years ago to less than 30,000 this year, officially. That's not who we are. That's not who we want to be. It's not right. And it disrupts families. And it ruptures the whole fabric of our community. We have to reverse it. People like us have to stand up to it in position of authority. And we're going to do that. So this isn't just another midterm election. This is about a statement of who we are as a people. Respect for women. Respect for new arrivals. Embracing diversity. Everyone's welcome. Who wants to get ahead? Who wants to take advantage of the opportunity America represents? To that pursuit of happiness. And the liberty and freedom you can experience here. In America, you never have to worry about a knock on the door for something you said yesterday politically. You can say whatever you want. You can believe whatever you want. You can congregate with others who feel the same way. Or you can speak out and criticize those who feel a different way. That's your privilege as an American. And that's who we are. So we need to restore respect for law. We need to restore respect for democratic norms. And we need to restore respect for our fellow human beings, wherever they came from, whatever they believe, whatever their ethnicity or race. They're welcome in America. They're not unwelcome. They're part of our fabric. And we want to make sure we don't change that in America. Thank you so much for having me here today. that Virginia International University is live streaming this event, which is fabulous. Oh, We're wait a minute. Don't tell me that. <laughs> we are going to take a short break, uh, five minutes, and then we're going to get back to Matt Waters, the Libertarian candidate for Senate. Please thank our, our candidates here. Thank you so much.